let us look at the example now. A company plans to hire people to fill up job vacancies. On an average, it takes about 6 months to adjust the labor shortfall. The desired level is uh, 100 people. It's a very simple system that I know how many people are required. I need to spend some time to hire them. Hiring process takes time. Uh, in this example, it takes on an average, it takes about 6 months. We had advertise and people will apply, and then later we make offers and some may join. Again, if you still there is shortfall, again you have to apply for multiple rounds because you are not getting at the same type of people, you need a range of people with variety of talent. So, uh, this is a very simplistic system based on that. So, let us assume that the initial value is 0, there is nobody in the system yet, decide value is 100. We need to build a SG model above system, ensure that model runs without error, units are consistent, and system starts in dynamic equilibrium. Let us take time as months time unit as months for simple reason is I have already written that on average it takes about 6 months to adjust the labor. So, if you are going to use time unit of months anywhere then everywhere it should be time unit of months. So, that makes our choice easy that is why it is taken as months and let us take the time step simulation time step as 1. See dynamic equilibrium is a uh, one physical analogy imagine a kind of a ball sitting on top of a hill. So, at that point it is in equilibrium, but any small perturbation to it, it will start rolling down the hill. So, it is at a point where system when you simulate it, you find that there is no dynamics in the system, system is constant over time and then when you make a small perturbation in the system, then system starts to change. Like if you imagine a pendulum, then dynamic equilibrium is pendulum is at rest, unless you apply external force it is not going to start moving. So, before you start simulating, ensure system is at rest, then we can start simulating, then we will figure out whether are we at a kind of a already at a equilibrium point where you will return to the same point afterwards or are we going to settle at a new equilibrium, those things become clear. Then equilibrium is a point where system has there is no other perturbation in system and uh, all values are kind of constant. I hope all of you have installed WinSim education version. Okay, first is let us click new model. Time step is already units for time is already will be month, and time step is one. So let us just leave it as it is. So this is what we are trying to model. So labor is the stock here. A net hiring rate is your inflow. We have an adjustment time coming in. Labor shortfall, which is the nothing but the difference between desired labor force minus the labor. Okay, so this is what we are going to model. I made you slightly different terms depending on what comes to my head. So we have labor. I am clicking outside and then it is not click and drag, just click once outside and click once inside. Net hiring rate, desired labor. labor gap adjustment time. Once it is done, then I am just going to connect them. The arrows can be straight lines, it need not be curves. That has that has no value to the model other than aesthetic aspects. So it can be just simple straight lines. You can make it. This curves look slightly better looking. That's all. It doesn't affect your model whatsoever. To connect it, you have to connect the arrow. Say click on labor. Click on labor gap. It'll draw a blue arrow. That's it. In the diagram I use, we can put the plus and minus signs. To do that. You can right click on the arrow and uh, there is an option called as polarity here in that you can say plus or minus whatever you want. So, that will appear next to the arrow. So, you right click it. You can get the plus or minus 
I'm just clicking the arrow head and clicking. So adjustment time it will be minus because we are dividing by adjustment time. Since adjustment time increases, net hiring rate will fall down, and the direction is opposite. Again, plus minus are just for visual aspects. Now click uh, this equation f of x is what shows to me. You will have something called as equation and f of x. Click that. So it will go black and white. It will go dark mode. That's I think common terminology these days. So once in dark mode, you click. Uh, let us start with labor. You click labor. Let us start from the top. Name labor is fine. Type is level. As it will level or stock is same. So nothing to change there. Units. Unit is person. Initial value it asks. Again, it's already integrating net hiring rate. We don't need to touch it. So we go to initial value. Let's put initial value as zero. Let's click. Okay. Let us go to desired labor. Let us go to units. Again, the units will be the same person. The equation is a constant value. Let us start with the equation as zero. Okay. Let us put the desired labor values also zero. Now let us go to labor gap. What will be the units for labor gap? So click the drop down. Already the other units that you have already typed will come. By default, when some gives two units, one is DMNL, which means dimensionless. Other is the time unit itself, which is month. So then we have defined person. So this also has to be person. Difference of person is again person. Difference is we want is desired labor minus labor. So if you click the variable here, the same will appear there. Okay. If you click it once. Or you can type it. It's up to you. Uh, but all the variables listed in this box, where I'm pointing with my arrow, has to be used in the equations defined in this equations box. If not, it will throw an error. For example, if I just write it like this, labor gap is decide labor, and click OK, I'll get an error saying following inputs are not used. So it prompts you saying that there are two inputs you are not used. One. So you click OK. And then put a minus sign. Put labor. Okay. Then we click OK. Let us note adjustment time. Adjustment time, time unit. If you can see, type is already constant. It is not getting affected by anything else. So it automatically selected as a constant. The unit is month. We are measuring time in months. And problem statement told six months. So I'm just going to put a value of six into this. Okay. The last comes in at hiring rate person per month. So net hiring rate is labor gap divided by adjustment time. Net hiring rate is units is person per month. The equation is labor gap divided by adjustment time. I'm just going to save the model. So let's again all check, take a look at labor. Labor is uh, units is person. Initial value is zero. Net hiring rate says inter net hiring rate. We just leave it. Go to desired labor. Units is person. Equation zero. We click OK. Labor gap. Units person. Equation desired labor minus labor. Adjustment time. Units const. Units month. Equation six. Is just a constant six. Net hiring rate, units is person per month, labor gap by adjustment time. It is case sensitive and work sensitive. Somewhere you use use person, somewhere else you use persons. For it, it is just a string. It will say it is wrong. Units don't match. It's just a piece of software. 
it is not going to parse your English. So, once you have got this you can do model, check model, it should say model is ok. So, now let us click simulate, it will ask data set already exists, you want to overwrite just say yes, simulation is already done. Now, you can select any say let us select labor that is a stock and if you click the graph on the left menu bar, this one which is being highlighted right now. 1, 2, 3, fourth one from the bottom. So, you get a straight line, there is no change in it. So, the system will always be in dynamic equilibrium when what happens? When desired state and current state is the same or when net flow is 0, when net flow is 0, then it has to be the same. In this case, so for example, if desired labor is 100, labor is also 100, then it will still be in equilibrium, no change will happen. So, this is what is called as dynamic equilibrium, over time things are still in equilibrium, nothing is changing. So, now we want to see what will happen when any of the stimulus changes. So, let us go open the equation, click desired labor and make the desired labor 100, and click ok. Let us click play, override data set yes. Now, if you let us click labor, I will start saying this nice goal seeking behavior asymptotic growth has happened. So, over time the discrepancy has been adjusted over time until the labor force reached its goal of 100 persons. So, this is the entire graph. So, let us see what happens. Just to visualize it better, I am going to change the model settings to instead of final time as 100, let me keep it as uh, say uh, 30 final time step. I am just taking the final time step as 30 to get a better resolution graph. So, I can explain things ok. So, this is the value of the stock that you should be able to see, even if x goes 100 is fine, but so let us observe what happened at time 6. So, your adjustment time remember it was 6. So, all we are trying to see is what happened after one adjustment time went ahead. So, adjustment time 6. The gap fulfilled is about say 65. So, out of 100, 65 was fulfilled. Now, let us see when time unit became 12. At time 12, the value is say about 88, I would say. I do not know the exact value, but I am just guessing probably it is 88 here. At 6, it is about 65 or rather at time 6 about 65 percent was fulfilled, the gap was fulfilled. Now, at time 12 total was at 88, which will be about 65 percent of the gap between 100 and 65, the previous time set was 65, 100 minus 65 about 35, about 60, 65 percent of 35, uh, that much percent would have been fulfilled at time 12. So, at every time unit or every interval of adjustment time, about 60 percent of the discrepancy or 65 percent of the discrepancy gets fulfilled and asymptotically it will reach its desired goal. That is how the scenario works in this model. Now, let us take a two different things. The top represents the labor, this net hiring rate. How I opened this graph was I clicked the labor, I click labor and click this causes strip. 
causal strip causal strip means it will plot the this one and plot all the inputs into this so that's what causes mean to understand what caused the dynamics of labor to change like this there is only one input which was hiring rate net hiring rate and unlike your exponential uh, growth systems in this the net hiring rate is going to keep falling down exponentially thing starts at around 16.5 or something or maybe like, yeah 16.5 and gradually comes down to zero this is expected because at equilibrium the system has to reach net hiring should be zero because once you reach the goal you don't need to do any further hiring goals are remaining constant If you want to know the numbers, you just click labor and click this table time down. You will get time on axis and get the actual values which it computes every time. Okay, then so maybe I can show you a neat trick. So once you get this labor, don't close this window. Don't close this window. I'm just resized it, moved it to the right. Now you just click somewhere here. Click hiring rate. And again, click the same drop down. Then you will find that the hiring rate is also added as another column in the same sheet. So you can start comparing the values. So if you select multiple things and click the graph, both the things will be displayed. You can do you can do one by one, or you can use shift. So first, if I do labor and net hiring, let's see what happens. I selected both. Now I'm going to click graph. I get both the graphs simultaneously. So very simple features, but very useful. All I have to do is whatever variables I want, I use Shift to select all of them and click that graph button. Then I get multiple graphs in one picture, to so that I can see exactly how it changes. But be careful about the units because here it uses left y-axis and right y-axis. Left y-axis is used for stock, right y-axis is used for persons per month. So if you have more variables. It will start to superimpose multiple y-axis one on top of each other. Okay, so just be uh, careful. We can try that also. Let's see what it does. Let us do net hiring, labor, labor gap. All three other two are constants. So I'm not putting it. So, so it's up to our intelligence to figure out which graph is mapped against what. But you get enough evidence. It already shows here labor, and bracket it says person. That means the unit of labor is person. Labor gap is person. The same units are appearing in this graph here. So if you don't write the units, it will just show it as blank. So you won't know what what is happening. Same thing. Net hiring rate is person per month, so it must be person per month. We know it is blue. It's highly highlighted as you go here. It highlights. So there are these kind of subtle features which is makes it very. Useful and powerful. Okay. Now let's. Uh, we already done this. Simulate scenario when initial labor is zero. Simulate scenario when initial labor is two hundred. Let us try that. So I'm not changing anything yet. With hundred itself, I want to know what it is. So okay. So when I click play, it will ask you this question. Current data set already exists. Do you want to overwrite it? We just say no. So here we can say labor hundred. So labor initial level was hundred. Let us click save. So that data set is now stored as labor initial hundred. Desired labor stays at hundred. Labor changes from zero to two hundred. Change labor to 200. Initial value of labor to 200. Desired labor continues to be at 100. Desired labor goes to 200. Then when I click simulate, again it will ask overwrite this labor initial 100. You say no, don't overwrite it. Save it as labor initial 200. Oh boy, that should be labor initial zero anyway. Labor initial 200. Even if you didn't get overwrite. We'll come back. 
and observe the graph. So, instead of approaching it from we have not changed the bottom, I mean we have not changed the model, desired desired labor is 100, current labor is 200, that means effectively we need to fire people. So, the net hiring rate here actually means I am removing from the system, but the same model works by just changing your inputs. As you can see, the labor is now falling to 100, it will be a what can I say mirror image of the graph that we got here, we are adjusting the discrepancy at every time unit about 60 percent of the discrepancy is getting adjusted ok. So, if you are not able to do both the graphs, I will give the instructions again, I will write it and put it in Moodle, you can check out those uh, instructions. Basically, before simulating for each setting you give the under what it should be stored here in the top, you can see the name here, you give it and store it. So, and automatically all those data set will be uh, alive uh, as long as simulation is up and running, I mean your uh, when sim is open. So, all those graphs will just get super important. We can also see how the net hiring works. So, here as you can see this was the people who are hired in the first case and the initial labor was 0. So, we had we hired lot of people and then slowly reduce the number of new hires. In this case lot of people are laid off and then as over time less and less people are laid off when the initial value is 200. So, the system remained the same, we just changed the parameters and the model became uh, even for letting people go the same model was used. When you change adjustment time, what do you think will happen? So, adjustment time from 6 became 2, how do you expect the shape to change? But if adjustment time is lower, we must reach the goal sooner or faster, earlier, right. So, we can try that and go to equation, change adjustment time to say 2, run it, overwrite and we will going to put no labor initial 282, click save, good labor, graphic, uh, I am going to remove one of it, ok. I just removed these two lines, so I am just putting two graphs, one when adjustment time was 6 which is the green one and the red one when adjustment time is 2. The initial value of stock was 200, the goal is 100, both reaches the same goal except as we expect as adjustment time is longer, it takes longer time or adjustment time is shorter, it has to reach the goal earlier, it is the same dynamics that we can expect, but the shape of the system continues to be asymptotic. So, for adjustment time is 2 months instead of 6 months, it is just saw that, uh, ok. So, I have the graphs here also. So, when uh, initial level is uh, 200 and adjustment time is 2, the initial level is 0, adjustment time is 2, of course, it will be mirror image except that you are approaching the goal from either the top or the bottom as the case may be and uh, as adjustment time becomes longer, it is going to take even longer to reach your goal, that is what this uh, graphs are telling us. But as each adjustment time passes, we will be adjusting about 60 to 65 percent of the discrepancy, an exponential approach to goal happens, state of system reaches goal at diminishing rate over 